Hello VC, Big 7000 with um, Gimme 10, 1973, Saturday night and um, I'm ready to uh, get this next installment underway. I've got 10 records, uh, I, I think the short list wasn't too hard, even though arguably 1973 was one of the best years in music, full stop, I mean, you know, I think a lot of people will agree with that statement. Um, thank you so much for the replies for 1972. Uh, if I watch your video, I put a comment on it. If I haven't watched your video, let me know and I will watch it. Uh, if you want to use some of the records that I'm showing in your video, please do it. I don't own the, the records rights. You know, I'm not going to get mad at you for showing the same records as me if you love them as well. None of that nonsense of, oh, you know, Big Star showed that record, therefore I can't show it. What what does it mean? If you love it, you love it. You put it in your, in your list. If you... Simple as that. Okay, 10 records, 1973. Now, um, you couldn't expect me to start this list without showing this beast here, which is more a cultural institution than a, than a music album, really. Uh, what to say about Dark Side of the Moon that hasn't been said before from its iconic cover, its stupendous uh, list of songs, its concepts, just a totally brilliant uh, record and I don't think I would like to expand too much on Dark Side of the Moon because I feel that I'm going to be saying things that are very redundant. Um, I love the segue between uh, Time and Great Gig in the Sky, that's my personal highlight of the of the record I just think it every time works so beautifully and Great Gig in the Sky which is largely improvised vocal scat is a master stroke really uh, completely this is a quite quite a funny pressing I've got a couple of these uh, a couple of copies of, of this this album and I've played it a thousand times and I'll probably play it another thousand times uh, you don't tire of this record, it's a masterpiece. So, uh, that's the first record. The second record that I have chosen uh, on this list is uh, the third of a fantastic trilogy of Can records, uh, Future Days, uh, which represents a kind of chill out version of Can and more ambient. Uh, Tagomago was experimental, rock kind of psychedelic, um, Eje Bamiyasi is more like f funky can, and this is ambient can, um, and this is my favorite can album, really, no question about, about it, it's my favorite can album, it's very no nautical, very sea oriented from its Neptune uh, uh, trident to songs that spray, you know, it's very... As you listen to this, it's it's very, it's got a very uh, ocean, you know, sound about it. About it, I don't know. I think if you know this album, you'll, you'll know what I mean. Um, and it's got Moonshake on it, which is, you know, in my opinion, Can's best song. Almost, it's so, it's funky and dynamic, and it's just, it's Damo Suzuki going nuts with invented lyrics, it's brilliant. If you don't know about Future Days, if you don't know about Can, if you're watching this video you've never heard about Can, please do yourself a favor, get this album and your mind will be sufficiently blown. Um, it's a masterpiece, an absolute must-have record. Uh, Future Days by um, Cologne's Most Famous Sons. <laughs> Can. Um, continuing with arguably the most important reggae album of all time, um, Catch a Fire by Bob Marley and Wells, the album that launched the, the, the musical genre reggae on a world, worldwide scale. Uh, before that, it was a very sort of niche industry, and after Catch a Fire, it just really caught a, you know, Caught on fire, reggae, I mean, really, absolutely in every possible way. Came out in this format, 
in this looking like this first uh, this sort of Zippo cover. This is a deluxe edition which I would highly recommend due to the fact that it has the original J Jamaican versions which are not overdubbed and uh, the released album which is overdubbed and if you don't know the story basically Chris Blackwell the island uh, boss got some western musicians to put some sort of slightly more polished funkier overdubs on the music that they recorded so if you listen to the original Jamaican versions they look they sound really a lot more rootsy than this. This is very, very polished in comparison. And I still, I have to say, I still prefer the released version. It's uh, This has got one of the best openers of any album that I can think of, Concrete Jungle. Uh, if you haven't heard Concrete Jungle, uh, just, just pop it up. This is a, an absolutely phenomenal record. Catch a Fire, uh, Bob Marley and the World. It's, it's just superb. And... Um, Another phenomenal record is uh, this album by John Martin, really John Martin's crown achievement, Solid Air. Uh, the title track, Solid Air, is a dedication to his friend Nick Drake uh, and um, uh, has really refused to, to speak about it. You know, he, he, he never he never talked about that song. He is now... Uh, passed away, uh, John Martin, he passed away a few years back, sadly, uh, he had a, a very, uh, his last few years were, were tough on him, um, this is just an incredible, incredible set of songs, the title track Solidaire is just mercurial, magnificent, spectral, even cosmic, it's got this quality, you know, the bass rolls like it's coming out of space, you know, it's just, it's an amazing track and um, my personal highlight is I Don't Want to Know with its, um, you know, Fender Rhodes solo in the middle, it's just an amazing, amazing collection of songs. Um, John Martin, the late great John Martin from Glasgow, Scotland, uh, solid there, uh, must inclusion in this list. Uh, I'm going to take a sip of my wine because my throat is just going mad. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, this is uh, Iggy and Stooges, Raw Power. Uh, again, an essential album. How can I not include this in the Gimme 1070? Uh, 73, um, I mean, what I was going to say about 1970s, I didn't use Fun House in 1970, but I definitely, definitely have to put this one in 1973 because it's just a high watermark of music, generally speaking. The very first track, on a personal level, because I presume people know these records and there's no need for me to expand on this record, you know it, you've seen it. But on a personal level, uh, Search and Destroy was the very first Stooges song I've ever heard. Uh, prior to this, I'd heard songs by Iggy Pop solo, like The Passenger and Lust for Life and songs like that. But, but that, the first song of from the Stooges that I ever heard was, was really Search and Destroy. That was you know, 15, 20 years ago, I don't know exactly. And... That song just hooked me into the, the music. I mean, this is kind of a bridging record between the Stooges, um, you know, the first Stooges record to Iggy's solo career. It's like you can see how he progressed from one to the other. Um, I really love Gimme Danger on this and, and Shake Appeal and Death Trip are just really amazing songs. Depending on which copy you get of this album, you know, you get a different mix, the Bowie mix or the Iggy mix, the Iggy mix is in the red uh, and it's very abrasive, either way it's, a, it's an essential record. Um, I'm going to go back to, to Germany uh, with uh, perhaps one of the most essential uh, Krat Rock records ever released, 
and I'm talking about Faust 4. This is an original press, near main conditions apparently. <laughs> yes, um, I have to say that uh, Faust 4 is probably the first or second ever crack rock record I ever bought. Um, I was at the time I was researching early. We're talking early two thousands. I was researching um, uh, crack rock because I was reading about it, and I've always been. The thing about me is I've always been an, an avid reader of, of music books, and uh, if I you know if you've ever been to my lounge next door, you there's almost more music books than than record. No, no, not quite, but. There's a there's a, a very large sections of, of music books and th this has been something that I've been doing education educating myself is the first step you know first I read and then I go and find records and so this is after reading articles in magazines about crack rock so you've got to listen to fast forward so what does Fred do he buys a copy now not this one it was a CD at the time. And uh, it blew my mind. I just played and played and played and played. And I couldn't get over songs like The Sad Skinhead or Jennifer or Picnic on the Frozen River, Giggly Smile, uh, Giggly Smile, sorry. Um, I couldn't get over a different, inventive, fresh, never heard music like this before. I just, to me, it was like I was listening to music for the first time. And uh, to this day, uh, I think Fast Four is an absolute and as a masterpiece, uh, like Future Days. Um, I would encourage you to seek it out. It it is the uh, is it's essential really. Uh, okay, people were talking about Stevie uh, in 1972 with Talking Book. Uh, my favorites. No, actually, I'm lying. This isn't my favorite one, Stevie. It's close to my favorite. My favorite Stevie will appear in the Gimme 10 1976. Watch this space. Uh, this is my second favorite Stevie Wonder. Inner Visions. Um, what to say, but this is just a masterclass of soul funk. Um, too high. Uh, living for the city, golden lady, high ground, the Je the Jesus children of America is a top tune as well. It's so so fantastic. Uh, just yeah, and you've got um, a cast of fantastic players, amongst which you have Malcolm Cecil from uh, from the uh, what's the the band um, Tonto's Electric uh, Tonto. Yeah, Tonto. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's the, the, the band. Um, and you know, all sorts of other uh, great players. Steven Wonder, Inner Visions. Okay. Um, you, know, you know it. I, do it. I don't need to talk about this. Um, on the same plane of... On this kind of same plane of existence, uh, I have to include... And I don't think I would include too many live records. Um... Because you know, studio albums are generally regarded as the benchmark, really. But this here is it is just so so good, so good. Um, and like Bill Withers has released about two or three really absolutely essential records, you know, from Steel Bill to um, um, I've Gone Blank. Uh, adjustments and the other one, uh, but in my in my mind in my book, I think this is almost the most essential thing he's, he's ever released. This is a the original German pressing of the record, um, and it is just a fantastic uh, set of his best songs. Basically, uh, "Use Me," um, "Ain't No Sunshine," "Ain't No Sunshine," "Grandma's Hands." Better of Dead, um, Lean on Me, just, but and and recorded really really top notch. Um, Bill Withers live at Carnegie Hall, highly recommended. Maybe the best live album that I've got. Just sublime. I can't. 
In Good Conscience, do a Gumite 1970s, the whole 70s, and not include an album by by Herbie Hancock. And I have to. I just really have to. In 1973, Herbie released two key records, this one and also Sextant, which are almost, almost included. Sextant is more jazz fusion. It's more angular. Uh, and it's phenomenal on this, but this is the one that you know really gets you going. It's um, head on this, um, what to say, it's just um, a top notch record, and I um, think nobody would disagree with me. So, yeah, head on this. I'm going to finish, you see, I'm a bit shorter than I started off with, with a little bit of something. Super I've tried to make the last record of every installment something a little bit out of the the expected norm, I guess. And 1973, I have chosen to finish it off with the soundtrack for the animated movie La Planète Sauvage, or as it's known in English, Fantastic Planet. Uh, by French composer Alain Goraguet. Um and this is mind-blowing kind of mix between progressive, psychedelic and funk, funky jazz. It's everything rolled into one. It's a very, very special package, this record. It really is mind-blowing in terms of... I remember the first time I... Um, uh, it's just it's just one of those memories that I had. The, the first time I went to uh, Anthony Camploni's house, uh, I brought a bag of records with me, and he has a really wonderful system, and he's got such an amazing, um, you know, like he's got, sp these speakers are like the size of my fridge, you know, so it, and we put this on the turntable, and he never heard it, and it, it just as his reaction was, you know, it's, this is it. This is a record that gives you that kind of reaction. The reaction that it, it is so incredibly different when you first hear it. You just go, like, you can't believe that music like that exists. Um, uh, like Planet Sauvage. If you haven't heard, just check online. It's been sampled to death, I think. Uh, it's completely amazing and different. So I'm going to stop here, VC. I hope you enjoyed this installment. Uh, if you didn't, I loved your complaints with uh, my uh, services. You just write me an email and say, you know, you did the wrong thing. <laughs> Otherwise, just <laughs> leave me some comments and uh, interact with me. Love you all. See you, VC.